What is up everyone? I am back and I know it's been a while but trust me, it's worth it. Because in this semester, I've joined something that is quite possibly the coolest club in the whole of NUS. Where else do you get to do the most extreme stuff that no one will be able to do in Singapore? Play with the most expensive of equipment that even Elon Musk will balk at? And meet the coolest and craziest people this side of our sunny island? Yes, I am of course talking about Shears Band. Look at all these cool people. Just kidding. While Shears Band is really cool, there is something that is just that much cooler. Imagine training for four times a week for four months straight, split between the rolling hills of NUS and the luscious forests of Bukit Timah Hill, and of course the cavernous U Town Wall all for it to culminate in an actual expedition to the Himalayas and Nepal to summit a peak high enough to get altitude sickness. That's right, there can only be one, NUS Mountaineering. So in this video, I'll be going through a quick overview of what NUS Mountaineering is, a brief history of it and what our training plan is like, as well as what I'm packing for our upcoming Nepal trip which is actually happening right now as the video is posted around the months of May and June. If you'd like to know more about NUS Mountaineering, you can follow us on our website at nusmir.com or you can follow us on Instagram at NUS Mountaineering. And if you appreciate cool content like this, do consider subscribing and liking this video. And without further ado, let's get started. So what is NUS Mountaineering? And why is it so cool? Well, basically, it's a student-run mountaineering club that runs an intensive semester-long program twice a year called the Technical Mountaineering Course, or TMC, where we spend the whole of the semester training up our mountain fitness, which includes long runs and hill climbs with weighted bags, as well as learn basic techniques such as ascending and rappelling from a rope, knots, and other cool climbing stuff, usually at the U-Town Wall. And this will culminate in a three week long expedition to either Nepal or India, uh, usually during summer or winter break, where we'll combine all the things that we have learned and trained for to take on the highest mountain range in the world. And along the way in the trip, we'll also learn more advanced mountaineering stuff, such as avalanche and crevasse rescues, how to use crampons, ice climbing, kind of basic mountaineering stuff, but it's advanced for us because all of us pretty much don't have experience before this. There are no mountains in Singapore. Bukit Timah does not count. And so how did this club came to be, you might ask? In 1998, we had the first Singaporeans ever to set foot on Everest, and that very same team wanted to train in 2001 to climb another mountain called Sishang Pangma. And the climbers felt that it would be great if they can give back to the community. And so they started a new CCA in NUS and recruited the first batch of new members to MIR. And by the way, we call NUS Mountaineering MIR, which is short for Make It Real. It's like kind of our tagline. But yeah, one thing led to another and every batch since have gone on to summit a peak, either in Nepal or in India, with the exception of 2020 and 2021 where no peaks were submitted uh, due to, of course, COVID-19. But all has changed in 2022 because this is the first time in I think over two years where NUS Mountaineering is actually hosting a real TMC and the mountain in question this year is Baden Power Scouts Peak in the Langtang Valley of Nepal standing at around 5,826 meters or thereabouts. So what does our training look like? Well, our training goes by a progressive regime. On Tuesdays, we have runs which range from about 3 to 5 km at the start to about 7 to 9 at the end. On Wednesdays, we have technical sessions at the U-Town Wall and on Thursdays, we alternate between hill runs and long runs. So long runs will start at about 3 kilometers and it will go all the way up to 12. And for hill runs, we usually just find some hill and run roughly about an hour on it. And on Sundays, is the dreaded Bukit Timah Hill training where we carry bags that start from about 6 kilo up to about 15 kilos up and down Bukit Timah and it stares multiple times. Yes, it is a pain. So that's just a brief overview of our training. And now I will take you on a packing guide 
if you ever want to go to Nepal. All right. So just a quick little overview of all the things that you need for a trip to the Himalayas. Starting off with what's this beanie, a glove liner, some very thick gloves, hiking socks. Inside here is a down jacket, a fleece jacket, a shell jacket. This is our gaiters that yeah, wrap around, I guess, your shin and your boot. Moving on, we have my climbing harness, a hat, some reading material. Uh, then I'll go through the clothing first. There's a uh, hiking pants. This is a uh, shell pants. You yeah, see, kind of patched up around the edges because these are rented from the mountaineering store yes this are my base layer base layer lower base layer upper uh, not too sure how many i'll bring i'll still still deciding uh, what is this long sleeve t-shirts probably not bringing that these are as you can see the ones that have the tags are borrowed from the uh, mir or mountaineering uh, locker so these are fleece pants I think yeah fleece pants some short sleeve t-shirts some pants undergarments and moving on to the other stuff got emergency blanket Swiss Army knife I'll go through the gear in a little bit just moving on got sunglasses normal sunglasses Clip-on sunglasses, GoPro, mount for the GoPro, extra batteries, and these are the ones hijacked from SAF. Got torch light, black tape, and first aid dressing. This is, what is this? Oh, it's an oximeter, COVID test kits. That one over there is a sleeping bag liner. This is, a solar panel you can generate some electricity which will charge this this is a 40,000 milliamp power portable battery so yes that's it for this part I still am missing a few things um, what am I missing I've not packed my water bottle or my mug or the cables extra power banks and all that kind of stuff but this should roughly give you a sense of what there is to bring. So what exactly do you need for a technical mountaineering course? Well actually, this is all you need, plus a harness. So if you see here, I have two Petzo attache, I think this is a HMS carabiners. The HMS because they're kind of wide at the end. This is a HMS carabiner with a clip here. So these are to prevent cross-loading. This is a belay device, or you could use it as a repelling device. This is a Black Diamond ATC pilot, I think. Yes. This is a ascender or a Jumar. So you can just imagine. A little fiddly. Put a rope through here, and then these teeth here will bite the rope. And it only allow it to move in one direction, so you can basically just slide it up the rope. Okay, and here are two Dyneema slings. These are very thin, very light, but very strong. So they're used to clip to various stuff. These are Prusiks. These are used for backups when we descend, or as a way to ascend the rope along with the Jumar. Kind of hard to explain, but they basically just wrap around the rope and if you press on them, they release. If you let go, they bite onto the rope. These are my extra carabiners. Not really super necessary. Uh, like, they're not critically necessary, but it's just good to have more carabiners around. This is my Petzo AMD, I think. Yeah, so bare minimum is four carabiners. So the big ones here. And these are my extra carabiners. So yeah. Oh, almost missed out these stuff on the floor. 
This here is a Ice X, Black Diamond Ice X. Uh, it's not a super technical kind. I don't think you can ice climb on this, but yeah, these are the just the normal mountaineering kind. And these are crampons. But basically, as you can see, they're like little spikes at the front. And using this little contraption, they cling onto this, which is my hiking boots. Mountaineering boots, really. Uh, yes, these are pretty fresh. So the crampons and the mountain boots are basically for when we start traversing snow or glaciers. Very useful. This is a helmet. Moving on. This is a bag to keep my sleeping bag. It's a bit of a mess here, sorry. Uh, this is my hiking bag. It's a Osprey Kestrel 68. And here, as you can see, the nearest mountaineering is our very own dry rubbish bag. So if we have any waste, uh, tissue paper, food wrappers, that kind of thing, it'll all go in here. Bring back what you carry to the mountains and keep it clean. Yeah. So today is our last tech <laughs> session. And here we have Arthur and Paul. Hello. Our two beasts. Welcome. So Arthur, how is it ascending for the last time before <laughs> Nepal? Oh, it feels fucking amazing. I can't wait to go in the mountain. 